All right, let's talk about the linear momentum. Uh, so momentum is P is equal to MV. And if we wanted to change the momentum Um, we would have to change the velocity. And we'll say that's for an object that is solid and we're not breaking it apart. So the mass will remain constant. So if the velocity changes, that means that it's going to have to accelerate. So if I take the derivative of v on this side, I have to take a derivative with respect to time on this side. And we know that dv dt is acceleration. Got my differential there. So, what does that mean for the differential of momentum with respect to time? Has to be force. So, in order to change the momentum, we have to change the velocity, which means we have to accelerate it. We accelerate objects by applying a force. Um, and this form tells us that if we have a momentum with respect to time graph, that the slope is going to be force. Okay, change in momentum over the change in time. Hey, what are you doing I'm making a video for Canvas. Okay, so if I rearrange this now, to put it as dp is equal to force times dt, the integral of the changes in momentum added up between, well, just gives us the total change in momentum, right? So this would be from the initial momentum to the uh, final momentum, which gives us the change in momentum. And this will evaluate between two periods of time. The change in momentum is given by the impulse. So that change in momentum is impulse. J stands for impulse. And what this tells us that if we have a graph that is force as a function of time, regardless of what the shape is, so if, if there's a constant force being applied, the area underneath that graph is going to be the change in momentum. That's it.